and here at Your Entrepreneur Resources, we discover the no fluff action steps to help you avoid all the overwhelm and all the BS out there, connecting you with the right mentors, resources, and tools, helping you every step of the way on your entrepreneurial journey. We go live here twice a week, interviewing different entrepreneurs and experts on all areas of business. So make sure to join our Facebook group and look out for the events inside your entrepreneur resources page. You can find all the links in the description box. Our guest here today is Heather Thatcher. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, I am awesome. I am so excited to be here, Venice. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. Heather is the founder of the Solopreneur Survival Guide, a podcast and membership program that provides specific step-by-step -step business building strategies to take the guesswork out of what's working in today's online business world. In this interview today, we're going to be talking about the three biggest organic marketing mistakes that people make and how to avoid them. I think this is so such an important topic and I'm so excited to dive in. But before we do, do you mind telling us a little bit more about your business and your journey with us? Absolutely. So I started off my career as a registered nurse working in the ICU. And what I was seeing was a lot of the reasons why people came to the ICU was because of illnesses and diseases that were linked to chronic stress. So I decided to get out of the reactive side of medicine into the proactive side. And that's when I started my first business, which was all about stress management and trauma healing. And then after a number of people went through my Mindset Reboot program, they started reaching out to me saying, can I start my own online business? Can you show me how to do that? And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I figured out what I was good at, narrowed in on being able to teach that, and then created an entire space where we brought in other experts, very much like what you do here, Venice, to fill in all those gaps that people could start, create, and run their own online business without adding on extra stress. Because it's truly my mission to help everybody manage their stress so that it doesn't cause long-term health effects. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested to hear because I know that for you, this is your mission. And why do you think that entrepreneurs and people that are trying to, you know, build their businesses online, why is it so stressful for them these days? Because I, I, I hear this a lot as well. Like everyone's like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed, like shiny object syndrome, imposter syndrome, and all of those. Like, why is this so stressful for us these days? So I think there's a couple of reasons why it's so much more stressful. One, it's because unlike our J-O-B job, mm -hmm. we're so much more invested in our business. Mm. We put so much more heart into that kind of thing. Even if you really love your job, it's just so much more of a part of you. And often entrepreneurs are high achievers, which is one of the markets that I work in. And we really link our worth to how much we can accomplish to the mm. level of success that we have. So we're stressed to try and create a sense of worthiness based on what we can accomplish in our business. And there is so much misinformation out there or a lot of the marketing that's being taught out there is actually for business to business, but not business to consumer. And it's a completely different ball game when you're marketing to a consumer rather than another entrepreneur. Because as entrepreneurs, we've got like credit card in hand and we're like, who am I going to buy from? I need somebody <laughs> to fix this problem. And we understand the necessity of doing that. Whereas the lifestyle space or a business to consumer space, the credit card isn't in their hand yet. Mm -hmm. It's in their wallet, in their purse, in the closet, in another room. You've got to be able to convince them in different ways. So that's where I see a lot of the marketing mistakes being made is that they're following advice that's not meant for the business that they're running. Mm -hmm. That they're running. <laughs> Mm -hmm, absolutely. I totally agree. And I love this transition, this little lead way into our main topic today, which is talking about the biggest organic marketing mistakes. Before we do talk about it, do you mind just telling us exactly what is organic marketing? So organic marketing is marketing that you don't pay for. Mm -hmm. Although even though people say like social media is the best free advertising you can get, it's not free, is it? Because it requires time, it requires maybe investments in graphic designers and all those different things. But basically it's or, organic marketing means that you're not paying some kind of advertising connection mm -hmm. to do that for you. So you're not investing in Facebook ads, you're not doing Google ads, Pinterest ads. It's really just the open source, not as trackable mm -hmm. marketing that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So besides social media, is there any other uh like way channel that is classified as organic marketing? Absolutely. So blogs, podcasts, mm -hmm. YouTube, uh, getting on podcast interviews or Facebook group interviews like this one. Uh, there's so many other kinds. Then you mm -hmm. could also do, if you have local business or if there's 
uh, commerce in your uh, city, then you can also reach out there. There's tons of different ways you can do organic marketing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Perfect. Email for sure. <laughs> um, so why is organic marketing important? What is like, you know, because I, I know you talked about it a little bit, but why should people be even paying attention to organic marketing? So I really believe that before you jump into paid marketing, you have to have a funnel that's working. And so mm -hmm. a funnel means you're giving people some kind of content that then gives you their information. It's an email address, maybe a phone number if you're doing text-based marketing. So you have some way to connect them again, and that brings them into your world where you can start to sell them something. And so mm -hmm. once you know that you're able to bring in the right people and get them to buy something, then you can start working on paying mm -hmm. for paid advertising. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're just making Mark Zuckerberg richer and yeah. he, like, he doesn't need it. So we need to be able to make sure that you've got something that's working first. And then also organic marketing, much more than paid marketing ever will, will create that connection that you need with your customer for them to buy. Mm -hmm. About five years ago, it was said that there was seven touch points that people needed before they were ready to buy. Now the research is showing that it's closer to 15 to 30 touch points just because wow. of the amount of online marketing that's going on out there. So that's where we need to make sure that we're building that connection and organic marketing is hands down the way to do that. Absolutely. Okay, let's dive right into the three biggest organic marketing mistakes. Do you mind starting with the first one and like take us through exactly how do we avoid these and what are them exactly? Absolutely. So the first one that I see people making is that they're niching down in a limiting way. and. Mm -hmm. I, there's so much talk about like you need to niche down, niche down until you're uncomfortable and then keep going and make yourself feel like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so really, we when we're thinking of your business, especially in a lifestyle space too, mm -hmm. uh, you may be thinking like, but I can help pretty much anybody that walks through the door. With me, the stress management thing, pretty much anybody is stressed. So I could apply my knowledge to them. But if we're starting off with that big pool before we're well known, mm -hmm. it's like you're shouting into the wind and you're marketing to no one. So what we need to do is figure out our first niche topic or mm -hmm. umbrella topic. And then you pick your first demographic that you're gonna target. And then you're gonna be able to market those same pieces of programming to different markets as you're ready to expand. So for example, again, my mission is to help with stress relief. And so my first market that I targeted with that were high achieving, highly sensitive people pleasers. Mm -hmm. And so I went in out to that market, made that market profitable for me. And then that made me realize that, oh, there's also this solopreneur market that needs help with stress. Mm -hmm. And so this is where, when we're gonna be talking about the next level, the next mistake that people make, it's about making sure you're putting the right content in front of the people at the right time giving away the right stuff for free. So I did that with a solopreneur market that also grew into my marketing agency because as you start to grow your business, there's new stresses that come along that we need to alleviate for you. So that's where that mm. track went. And then we're starting up another track. And it's just, once you have this topic, it just opens up options for you. And mm -hmm. it doesn't feel tight or limiting anymore because you know that big, this demographic is what I'm starting with. Mm. And if I like that and I wanna stay there, Great. But if you're ready to start expanding, once you kind of got your feet and you've sort of found a, a funnel and system that's working, then you get to keep going. So yeah. that's mistake number one. You're niching down in a limiting way rather than a way that has so much more potential. Mm -hmm. How uh, I'm really interested to hear your thoughts about this, but how do you know when is the right time? Like, how did you know when was the right time for you to expand and, you know, open up instead of like just in specifically in this one niche, open up to the other niche? Great question. So often your customers will let you know. So like I was saying with mine, the one business sort of led to a space where there was a gap and there's mm -hmm. like, hey, I have all of this no like and trust with you. Can you show me how to fix this problem now? Mm -hmm. And so you just decide, can you do that? And mm -hmm. then with the solopreneur, again, they created a gap where they're just like, okay, so now I don't want to be a solo entrepreneur anymore. I need help with all these different things. Mm -hmm. Can you help me do that? So then it just sort of helped. If you let your customers kind of navigate that for you, that's one way to do it. Another way mm -hmm. is to know once you've got a repeatable system that's working for you and you feel like, 
okay, I could add on a completely different revenue stream. I can see how these pieces are going to fit together. Then you should go for it. Mm, mm -hmm, absolutely. And do you, what do you think is the first step people should take when it comes to um, opening up to all the niches? Should they, you know, like put the first one aside or outsource? Like, cause I talk about outsourcing all the time. So I'm like, I'm really curious how you manage to do it. So I managed to do it all as a solo entrepreneur for several years mm -hmm. because of my repurposing strategy. Oh, yes. I always yes. plan to repurpose content before I create it. I decide that I'm going to, for example, create a social media post with a 200 word caption because mm -hmm. then that caption can also become an email if I need it to be. Plus that caption can also become a daily podcast because mm. 200 words takes about 60 seconds to read that. Also, mm. if I record a video at the same time as I'm recording the audio podcast becomes my daily story. So then I've got all of these pieces moving in from one piece of content. Mm. So really that's what we need to do. And then also set up evergreen content that will be able to stand the test of time and be okay in a, a year or two years from now. Mm -hmm. absolutely I love that and you talked about putting the right content in front of the right people at the right time so mm -hmm. I guess that also links so closely to content do you mind walking us through a little bit more about that yeah absolutely so when I oh my dog's coming in <laughs> it's live everybody yeah, <laughs> um okay can you go please, go please so when we when we look at content that we're creating often mm -hmm. because we're fixers we're trying to put content that's going to fix somebody's problem before mm. they're ready to invest in their mm. time and their energy, their money to be able to fix that problem. Mm -hmm. And so when I first started my business, I came from an ICU where my customers just came to me and I would start my day with them right there. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of bringing people into my world was very foreign to me. Right. And I saw so many people talking about like, teach the what and the why for free, save the how for paid. And how oh my like, gosh, yes. <laughs> oh, you're just like, what does that even mean? How, how do you do that? And so then I was struggling for a while. And then I realized there was this medical theory that I used all the time when I was working in public health to help people, you know, take control of their health and mm. maybe lower their diabetes medications or improve their cholesterol, all these different things. So I took that model, it's called the trans theoretical model of change. And I applied it to my marketing and oh my goodness, it was magic because it really gets at the mindset of the people at the five stages of change. Mm. And these five stages of change show you when they're ready to buy different kinds of offers. Ooh. So those five stages are pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. And so in pre-contemplation, people are really much like head in the sand. They don't even mm -hmm. know that they have a problem. They just feel like, oh, they're the people that are really stuck in it. They can't mm -hmm. see it yet. And then contemplation is when people are looking at all of the stuff that they're standing in and they're just thinking, there must be something better than this. Mm -hmm. Something has got to be better than this. And so that's what they start looking on social media. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the kind of content you're giving to people in contemplation needs to help them realize that they don't want to stay here anymore, mm -hmm. that they need to do something. Yeah. And that's where doing assessments can work really well. And quizzes are a really great lead generator often because like everybody wants to know what Game of Thrones character they are or whatever <laughs> right. it is. So you right. create something like that that's really specific for your business. And it doesn't have to be wacky and creative. It doesn't have to involve expensive quiz software. I'm from the generation of where quizzes were in magazines and you would like circle the numbers and add them up and mm -hmm. you'd be able to do it yourself. So the PDF version of a quiz is great. It works really well. Mm -hmm. And all you're trying to do is help them again, realize that they don't want to stay stuck. So all of your content at these phases needs to show them that you understand where they're coming from, that you know what they want, and that you've got a logical framework to get them there. And that's what we're going to talk about with mistake number three. But mm -hmm. before we get there, mm -hmm. once you're generating that internal motivation for people in that contemplation phase, then you're going to be able to ready to sell them something. And that's where the preparation phase is. So when you think about your customer journey and you're working all of those things out, you're going to come to some conclusions about what they want versus what they need. Because those are often two completely different things. But if you try and sell them what they need before they get what they want, 
nobody's going to buy it. And so a clear example of this is for a health coach that she recognizes that everybody needs more self-love and self-compassion because that's really going to fix their weight problems on a long-term basis. But if she were to say to all of those people that are following her wanting to lose 20 pounds, buy my course on self-love, they'd be like, oh, I'll get there. I need to lose the 20 pounds first. Then I'll love myself enough to be able to maybe do this. Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to give them something that meets them with what they want. And that's what your preparation level offer can be. Generally, it can be a lower cost offer. Uh, it fixes their want problem. And then you can use some of the strategies that I'm going to share in the next section uh, to be able to sell your action level offer. And so your action level offers where they're really ready to dive into what they need to fix their problem. Mm -hmm. And then after that, once they've done that course or group coaching program or working with you one-on-one -on -one or whatever your higher ticket offer is, then the maintenance mode is there because we're creatures of habit and we've been living in these other habits for years of our lives, decades for some of us. So we need to make sure that we're helping those people maintain those changes that we're creating for them. Mm -hmm. So that's where the maintenance level offer works really well. And often your preparation and maintenance level offers can be really similar. And all of these different pieces, when you've niche with that niche umbrella topic, will be able to overlap quite a bit. Your action level offer will likely be very much the same thing, just a different sticker on it. And then your preparation level offer will be a little bit different, but your maintenance offer will also be very similar. So working through your customer journey in those five stages can change the game for you because then you'll look at what people need to know in action. And you'd be like, okay, what do they need to know before they're ready to do that? okay, that's my preparation level offer. What do people need to know before they're ready to take the preparation level offer? Well, that's whatever you need to share in contemplation. And so that will be your social media, your emails, your blog, that kind of thing. And that's where the mistake number three that people make is that they don't know how to build anticipation for their offer mm -hmm. before they launch. And that's one of the most important things which you can do in contemplation is learn how to pre-sell your offer. That's incredible. I love this so much. I think this is so important because a lot of the time we, we know, you know, like create a signature offer, create, you know, all these different things. And we're like, but but how do we know what to create? Yes. <laughs> what, like what problem are we solving? And I love that you mentioned you should solve the want before the need. Like you need to have little steps. It's, it's the funnel, right? Like instead of saying, hi, you've never met me before. I can give you this like huge result if you buy this $10,000 product versus taking them step by step through the different stages and the different process, walk them down the funnel. Yeah, please tell us more about um, the third mistake that people make as well, please. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that we don't know how to build anticipation for our offer mm -hmm. before we launch. We don't know how to pre-sell that. And so, like I mentioned earlier, your job in your free content really is to show people that you understand where they are right now. You know what they want. And so you can help highlight that gap because that's, again, what the assessments are going to be, the discovery pieces are going to be. They're going to show that gap because that builds that internal motivation. But the most important part is to show that you've got a logical framework to get them there. And that's a part that a lot of people are missing out on because we buy for emotional reasons and then use our logic brain to validate that decision. And so if you're just saying, hey, I can get you 10K months in 90 days, you're just like, cool, but how? Right. And it's that how piece that people are missing. So you're not gonna teach them how to do it. You're not giving away the action level content too soon. But you're going to be able to talk about your business in a really effective and coffee conversation kind of way, like you're having somebody over for tea. Mm -hmm. So the key to this is to think about, OK, so where they are right now, what do they want? What are four things, four big topic things that they need to do to get there? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be able to talk about those four things, those four pillars of your framework or your system, mm -hmm. and you're going to be able to sell your program without people really feeling like you're selling. So for example, for the Solopreneur Survival Guide, you have to clarify your messaging, to streamline your content creation, streamline your audience attraction, and streamline your launch system. And if you do those four things, you're going to have a successful business. Mm -hmm. It's just like building blocks of a puzzle. Mm -hmm. And so I could go on a social media post and say, 
in my efficiency catalyst program, I teach you how to clarify your messaging with this, this, and this. And people are going to be like, yep, being sold to, scroll on by. But if I were to say, clarifying your messaging and narrowing your niche doesn't have to feel limiting or scary. It actually opens up the possibility and helps you break through the noise, which is why we talk about it in pillar one of the efficiency catalyst framework. Mm -hmm. And so I've dropped the name of my program. I've explained what it is and why it's important, but I don't ever say, oh, I have a program that can solve your problem. Yeah. Next people to sign up, get this. It doesn't have that energy at all. So that allows you to pre-sell your program. And you can do the same thing in your preparation level offer. Throughout my preparation level offer, I'm sprinkling the name of my action level program. And usually once people have heard it two or three times, then I get a message from them to be like, what are the doors opening for that again? I oh, yeah. That's the credit card in their hand. Mm -hmm. Again, and it's just because you've built that no like, and trust and you're pre-selling and building that anticipation in a really gentle way. Mm. I, I, I really, I think this is so important pre-selling because a lot of the time people dive in and they're like, okay, I want to make money right now. I'm just going to put this product out there and I just assume that everyone's going to want to buy it. But that's not true at all. Do you mind just telling us how you you know, walk us through exactly what kind of social media posts you create or how often, because I think that's a huge one. We don't want to overdo it, right? So mm -hmm. how often, which social media channels do you um, use to pre-sell your products? Uh, so I highly recommend being on as many social media platforms as you can, mm -hmm. but one at a time. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you've got systems and strategies in place so that way you're not overwhelming yourself with social media tasks. And so I use a social media scheduler to help me with that because I actually have, for each of my different markets, I have an entire year of evergreen social media that just schedules out on repeat. So I never have to worry about it wow. for all four businesses that I run. So it's kind of nice. I would highly <laughs> recommend it. Um, and that's because I just have such targeted messaging that it's really easy just to create content and set it up to go. So that being said, I talk about my offer on social media, the preparation level offer, uh, two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. But because, again, it's in that really gentle coffee conversation way where I'm just like dropping what it is that I teach. I don't always name my program, but I always talk about how this is a part of this membership. This is part of the community. I just did a call with my community on blah, blah, blah. So you're always dropping the idea that this is what your next step is. And again, you're just talking about where they are, where they want to go, and the four steps that's going to get them there. Because that's really what creates that no like, and trust on both an emotional and a logical level. Mm -hmm. I love this. And for entrepreneurs that's listening right now, if you want to check out Heather's social media, make sure to check out the links in the description box because I think you can see everything in action yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Before wrapping up, I know you have a special gift for us. Do you mind sharing a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So the first part of figuring this whole puzzle out is you have to figure out your niche topic umbrella mm -hmm. and then also your first niche demographic and how that's all going to fit together. And so I have a no pitch workshop. It's a mini course on designing your niche. It's got handouts. I do walk through pieces with you, lots of examples. And so you can get that at heatherthatcher.com slash niche. Yay, perfect. And before I let you go, would you mind sharing where people can connect with you and find you online as well? Absolutely. So you can find me uh, at my website, heatherthatcher.com. And then you can also find me on social media at the Solopreneur Survival Guide, at Online Marketing Survival Guide, and at the Ultimate Life Survival Guide. Those okay. are my three active ones. Perfect. Thank you so much for being on your Entrepreneur Resources Show. I love this topic. I love everything you've shared. And I can't wait for you to come back again and share more. Um, for those of you that's listening right now, make sure to grab Heather's freebie. I think it will be very valuable to you. We have our live interviews here with experts twice a week. So make sure to stay tuned and join our community on Facebook. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you everyone for 